The world population is expected to grow by over a third or 2.3 billion people between 2009 and 2050. And nearly all of this growth is forecasted to take place in the developing countries, among which Sub-Saharan Africa's population, such as Nigeria, is expected to grow the fastest. Now, Nigeria's agricultural sector is faced with so many challenges from time past, which had led to the current food crisis. Now, government policies to encourage organic farming alone is not enough to meet the immediate diet and food demand of the highly increasing populace. Hence the need to employ modern technology, i.e. biotechnology, to boost food production in Nigeria. Now, boosting food production through biotechnology is our focus today. Welcome to Business Insight and Plus TV Africa. I am Justin Akadonye. Now, the federal government's approval of $328.87 million railway consultancy services, Federal Account Allocation Committee, among others, rounded up Business Nigeria for this week. Take a look. The Federal Executive Council, presided over by the President Muhammad Buhari, has approved 115.4 billion naira for the dualization of the proposed Kano Kanzure Kongolam Highway and Katsina State from single carriageway to a dual carriageway. Minister of Works and Housing, Babatu De Fashola, who disclosed this to State House correspondents after the council meeting, explained that the project, which covers 131.4 kilometers, would be completed in 48 months. The Federation Account Allocation Committee shared a total of 8.16 trillion naira among the three tiers of government in 2021. However, data from the Median Term Expenditure Framework and Physical Strategy Paper for 2022 to 2024 shows that the amount budgeted to be disbursed to the three tiers of government during the 2021 fiscal year was 8.43 trillion naira. This resulted in an allocation shortfall of 217 billion naira during the period under the review. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has begun the recertification of Lagos and Abuja airports. The Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, Captain Noho Musa, has said this. As a result, he said inspectors of the regulatory agencies had begun a series of regular meetings with the officials of the Federal Airport Authorities of Nigeria with a view to ensuring that open items discovered are closed. Musa disclosed that technical inspections of the airports were done last year to ascertain some identified gaps and that actions plans were expected to be developed. Nigeria was once more unable to meet its oil production allocation by the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, in January. The country was only able to pump 1.46 million barrels per day of the expected 1.683 million PBD in January, although it achieved an improvement of 50,000 PBD on its 1.41 million PBD production in December 2021, the Africa continent's biggest oil producer remained far from meeting its target. Governor of Central Bank Godwin Mefile has flagged off the Project 100 for 100, an initiative from the CBN geared towards increasing productivity and wealth creation for the economy. Mr. Emefile said a total of 28 companies whose proposals have been duly screened were awarded this funding opportunity to the tune of 23.2 billion naira. Welcome back. That was Business Roundup for this week. 
Agricultural experts have recommended that the government should be more proactive in using science, technology and innovation, especially biotechnology, to address food security challenges facing the continent. Hence, there has been increased campaign for biotechnology. I am now being joined by the Deputy Director, National Biotechnology Development Agency, that is NABDA, Dr. Rose Guidado. Many thanks for joining us, Dr. Guidado. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, so let's Thank just get, way. all right, let's just dive straight into it right now. For those who might not really know, break it down. When we, mean, when we talk about biotechnology, specifically if you're talking about agriculture, what does that really mean? Oh, when you're talking about biotechnology, you're not just talking about um, agriculture. Mm. Biotechnology is also used in other sectors of the economy, in the area of medicine, for better medicines and cheaper medicines, in the area of environment, for cleaning up uh, the environment, you know, for ripping the environment of um, pollution and all those, and in the area of industry. So I think about four different sectors agri, environment, industry, and medicine. And so it's, it's a very, very um, important um, technology and is actually defined as the use of living organisms or substances from those living organisms to make or modify a product, improve plants or animals, and then develop microorganisms also for specific use. So they actually employ enzymes. And you know that enzymes mostly are from microorganisms. Organisms. They are microorganisms, yeah. And right. so, yeah. So we have two aspects. Mm. It's classified into two, the modern biotechnology and the traditional biotechnology. Okay. So the traditional biotechnology started about thousands of years ago. All right. And it's all about fermentation, selective breeding, you know, and so on and so forth. All right, so fine. The wild one is all about DNA, you know, using high techniques, of course, you know, to develop plants, animals, and what, to be able to meet up, especially in agriculture, in the area of agriculture. Mm. All right, fine. Let's talk about agriculture since the, uh, you have just uh, mentioned that. Let's continue with that particular line of thought. So tell us more what, um, the, role, what the role of biotechnology is really in enhancing uh, food production. Because right now, Nigeria, Africa is actually facing a bit of food uh, crisis. So how does biotech come in? All right, biotech comes in you know, as a complementary tool to the traditional breeding methods to the traditional farming, you know, that our farmers have been engaged into. It uses, you know, high techniques, of course. It has the potential to address specific, you know, problems, challenges that we face, you know, such as the climate change effects, such as the insect and pest infestation of our crops, soil degradation, that's infertility, soil infertility, you know, flood, drought, salinity, and all those things. All these are some of the factors that actually affect productivity. It makes our farmers, you know, to keep on farming, tilling the soil without any good, you know, outputs. Their productivities are usually, you know, between one to three percent. It's never high. So, but this technology now has that potential, very immense potential, you know, great promise, you know, uh, to make farmers to have higher yields, you know, at, you know, so that their productivities, of course, will be high and work, and so they will make profit, you know, by developing some of the crops, you know, to be able to resist, you know, some of these insects and pests. You know, insects and pests are very highly devastating, and then the salinity, so that some crops can be, you know, uh, tolerant to salinity, and then tolerant to flood, tolerant to drought, and then some of them can be climate smart, you know, and all those things. And then some can actually be enhanced to have, you know, high nutritional value, you know, some foods to be highly nutritious, you know, so that um, the malnutrition that is highly prevalent in the country and in Africa and that can be addressed, you know, by this technology. We are not saying it's a panacea, but it can actually contribute because it's been proven, you know, 
over in, in other countries, in the US, in Brazil, in Canada, in China, I can go on and on, even in Africa here, in South Africa, you know, they're actually enjoying uh, the benefits. The farmers over there are reaping the benefits of um, the use of this technology. And so Nigeria has also joined suit and our farmers over here are already, you know, reaping, beginning to reap the benefits, especially the cowpea that uh, has just been... Okay, before we get into the cowpea, let's do, uh, stay on um, the farmers. Uh, you said that they're uh, reaping the benefits, uh, but really most times uh, people are really prone to not accepting change. They really want to just go with the normal way or the usual way of doing things. So would you really say that farmers in Nigeria have begun to accept uh, this technology and uh, what are the testimonies that, that you have gotten as a government agency even after harvest? Yeah, of course, um, farmers are accepting, they have accepted because the demand that we're having, why I'm saying so is because of the demand, it's evidence-based, we are seeing it, we're experiencing it. Uh, farmers, I mean, the demand that we have for this um, BT copy, that's the BT beans, beans that has been modified to resist uh, the stubborn insect called Maruka vitrata. Maruka is a butterfly. And so it, it can actually, you know, um, give uh, losses. I mean, up to 90%, 80% losses to farmers. It, you know, makes them to lose sometimes everything that they have cultivated. So now that we have this one, which has been developed to resist that Maruka, you know, that butterfly, of course, farmers are seeing it. It's evidence-based in their farms. And those that have cultivated the copy, you know, especially last year, I mean, many of them went into it, but we were not able to meet the demand because that last year was actually the first year, but this time around, we're going to have more seeds. The demand is very high because most of the people, not even the farmers, even some public servants cultivated, you know, on a small scale. And the yield they got was really overwhelming. It's mm. been so exciting. The farmers are happy because they're seeing it. They're seeing that the gene is working. The insects, Maruka, I mean, are not even going near, you know, uh, the, me, uh, well, I also cultivated it, but I don't think I've ever seen, I ever saw Maruka, you know, around um, the, you know, the farm and so on. Same thing with the farmers. So the number of sprays, you know, has reduced from eight sprays, you know, uh, when you plant the conventional copy, now down to two sprays. And that's of economic importance because mm. you don't have to do like eight, ten sprays for you to have high yield. But now with this technology now, of course, it has actually been proven efficacious. Farmers, some farmers don't even do the sprays at all. If you, if you know that you are not, your area, you know, is not prone to Maruka, of course, you might not even, not, you know, need to spray it even once um, or, or so. And so, but even the two sprays is to take care of other insects that are not in the same family with Maruka mm. because uh, copy is susceptible to other insects, you know, other than Maruka. All right. And so, I mean, it's, it's evidence-based. A trial will convince you. All even right. You, I can send you this and you try it yourself and see by yourself and because the yield is high and it's early maturing. Only 75 days is ready once you plant it. All right. And the yield will be high and that's it. All right, Dr. Gidalo, just, uh, just hang on. We'll take a, a breather now and we'll come back. We'll talk more about uh, if there are safety concerns uh, related to the new use of um, biotechnology. Uh, we'll discuss some more and other key factors hindering the adoption of it in Nigeria. Okay. In a moment, it's still Business Insight on PLUS TV Africa. We'll take a quick break and return with more to join us again. All right, welcome back. It's still Business Insight on Plus TV Africa, and we are looking at the role of biotech in uh, ensuring food security in Nigeria. And we have joining us Dr. Rose Gidado, uh, Deputy Director of NABDA. Thanks for staying with us, Dr. Gidado. Let's talk more concerning this now. Just for sake of understanding, are there food safety concerns uh, related with the use of um, biotech? Yeah, of course, um, there are food safety concerns. And this is not just uh, with this technology, it's, it's, it's a global phenomenon. All technologies, any new technology that comes into play, of course, um, there will be concerns. But so far, um, you know, all those concerns are perceived. They are not real. In, 
And most of those concerns are being raised by environmentalists, you know, simply because you're using, you know, doing is a gene exchange, um, taking uh, genes from an unrelated species to an unrelated species. And so their concern is that there may be interaction, you know, that could cause either danger or words, you know, um, within that um, crop that you have developed. But ultimately, their they're, they're feed and they're safe for consumption. So far, so far, there's no food safety concern that has been reported, whether somebody has consumed and, you know, uh, maybe became ill or what. So some group of scientists in Nigeria also conducted a history of safe use for the transgenic, um, that's the copy that has been developed, you know, and they, I think they did it for many years, and they found that uh, not even one, you know, ill health issue was reported. All right. And these are Nigerian scientists. They are Nigerian scientists. The, the scientists that developed this uh, at ABU Zaria Institute for Agricultural Research. So All right, they also let you know that there's no uh, safety world, concerns. I mean, there's a world scientific uh, consensus for the safety of their crops. Mm. Currently, it's been the safety is actually being endorsed by World Health Organization, Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO. Environmental Protection Agency, USDA, and several other scientific bodies. All right, Doctor yeah. Doctor Gidado. All right, Doctor yeah. Gidado. Let's talk more concerning um, this uh, BT cowpea because the average Nigerian, uh, myself inclusive, I love um, eating uh, cowpea. That is beans, like we call it, you know, here in the local parlance. Uh, let's talk about uh, you know this uh, cowpea for one uh, minute. You know, you just talked about how it's been accepted by farmers in Nigeria, but yeah. how, let's talk about affordability right now. For the average farmer, is it something they can easily get access to? And uh, economically, is it something they don't have to go rob the bank, you know, to be able to, you know, cultivate this particular uh, species? Yeah, we're, we're trying all our best to make this seed available to all farmers. It's, it's um, not expensive. Is one kilogram, I think, is 1,000 naira per kilogram. And so it's, it's not really uh, expensive. It's affordable by every um, farmer. And uh, the availability is actually the issue. This year, I think many seed companies, we have local seed companies, uh, about three local seed companies, and we have an additional seed company now, and many other growers, of course, they've joined to produce enough seeds for the farmers. All right. You know, there Thank will you. be this year availability and the affo affordability is already there. All right, uh, before we let you go now, Dr. Guidado, if there are any, tell us, uh, what are the key factors hindering the adoption of this particular agric biotechnology in Nigeria? Uh, let me say that as a country, we've made huge um, you know, progress anyway in the adoption. Um, but one other thing is, the low level of awareness that exists, mm. low level of awareness. Some people are ignorant, some because they don't have the knowledge, they don't have the information, the scientific information available to them for them to understand that they, I mean, these foods, any food that's made from or any crop, you know, that is genetically modified or any food that is from a genetically modified crop is safe, as safe as the conventional counterparts because they undergo a lot of scrutiny. So not all people understand that fact. So awareness, the level of awareness is actually low. We're trying our best under the platform of the Open Forum on Agricultural Biotechnology. Um, I'm the country coordinator, and we've been trying our best to do that. You know that Nigeria is, is actually large and diverse. So we need more people on board to join us in the campaign to tell Nigerians to give them those scientific facts that they need, those evidence-based facts, of course, to, you know, to show, to showcase that, of course, uh, the technology is very, very safe because we have a safety valve in place in Nigeria. We have an agency, a regulatory agency, National Biosafety Management Agency. The agency is the competent national authority, of course, on safety. When right. it comes to safety, of course, they are the competent national, I mean, uh, national authority, and they are actually well capacitated. All right, thank you, Dr. Gidado. Doing uh, their job.
All right, we must say a very big thank you for sharing this useful insight, and not just to you know Nigerians, but specifically to farmers uh, who should be, you know, making the most of this wonderful opportunity that technology has brought to indeed uh, farming and of course uh, economy of Nigeria. Thank you so much. We have been speaking thank you so with Doctor. For joining us in the campaign. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with Dr. Rose Gidado. She is uh, the deputy director of NABDA. And I've actually been enlightened more about um, the BT copy because I love eating bins. All right. I would leave you with uh, tips on how to write an informal proposal to help in your business. I don't know. That's the size of the show. We'll return again next week. I am Justin Akadonye. Many thanks for watching. Writing an informal proposal. The thought of writing a proposal overwhelms many people, but the task does not have to be daunting. Informal proposals are written when people need to ask permission to make a purchase, undertake a project, or write a paper. This type of proposal is a way of persuasively putting forth an idea and asking for action to be taken on that idea. When writing a proposal, consider who will read the proposal and what that person may or may not already know about what you're proposing. Follow these steps when writing a proposal. 1. State your purpose. Do this clearly and concisely so that the reader knows immediately why you are writing. 2. Give some background information. Explain why you are proposing your suggestion so that the reader has a better understanding of the problem. 3. State a solution to the problem. This is where you give specifics about your suggestion. 4. Show costs. Lay out any costs that will be involved. 5. Conclusion. Wrap it up by restating the problem and the proposed solution.